top 10 hottest comics of the week. That's right, the top 10 hottest comics of the week based off of cover prices data. This is real data, people, not speculative. It's based off of the sales and you know all of the, all of the online sales and what is hot. And from there, Chris takes the three most interesting picks and dives into why he finds these books the most interesting out of that list. Now, this list comes out on a Monday. Our live show is on Friday, so we just dissect things a little bit further. Uh, so here we go. Rob, you ready? We're going to get into it. All right, here we go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. A nine of them Robert Vendetti books? They are, right? It's, it's a top ten list of Robert Vendetti. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you'll recognize these. Please, I'm sure. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. All right, here we go, everybody. Top ten hottest comics of the week. At number ten, we have Task. Master number three, that new Korean superhero that was introduced in this book, hot, hot, hot. At number nine, Final Crisis number seven, cover B, Chris will get into why. At number eight, Infinite Crisis number five, the Jim Lee cover. Um, first, first Jaime Reyes as the Blue Beetle, and we all know why that's hot, because we were going to see him in the DCEU. At number seven, G.I. Joe, real American hero, number 32, first appearance of Lady Jane. There is a rumor that there will be an Amazon series, a G.I. Joe Amazon series of Lady Jane. Uh, interesting. Uh, we all love our G.I. Joe. Uh, number six, Batman Black and White. Number three, first appearance of Mia Max, Mia Maps Mizuguchi, uh, Gotham Academy. She's the new Robin. Uh, number five, this adventure, number 45, the new stand copy. Uh, we all know why that's hot. Uh, if you're watching WandaVision. At number four, Marvel Voices Legacy. Number one, the Olivier Copiel variant. I am loving this cover. I have one myself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Number three of Action Comics. Number nine, the first cover of Calvin Ellis as Superman. Guys, there was the news. J.J. Abrams, Tina, and uh, and uh, Coates is uh, they they are they are producing a new Superman film that will not be Henry Cavill. Uh, number two, no, is Final Crisis. Number seven, first appearance of Calvin Ellis. And at number one is West Coast Avengers Direct, number 45. So I'm going to, Chris, before we get to it, before you get to it, I'm going to ask Robert if he actually is upset that it wasn't all of his books in there. Be honest. I kind of expected it, to be honest with you. Uh, we're waiting for that Hawkman movie to hit. You know what I'm saying? Then, then we'll see. That's Absolutely. We're going to push for that. We are gonna, I'm going to buy them all up. Yes. I'm buy them all up right now. You heard it here first. All right, Chris, though, so you have three picks that you find most interesting. So right now, Chris, you are just going to dive right into it. I am. Actually, before I dive right into it, I do want to let you guys know that right now, if you aren't familiar with Cover Price, you've never been to their website, coverprice.com, there is a, a coupon code below, Journos Comics. There's a link below that you can click and steps to follow to where you can sign up to get their unlimited membership for only $1.99 a month for two months. So definitely take advantage of that, guys. I'm a paying member of Cover Price. I use them every day. Jeff we, he uses them every day. And, you know, it's a database. You can um, check prices of comic books and what's going on in the market. And it's, uh, it's also uh, inventory for your comic books if you want to store your comics uh, into a database. So definitely, Journal's Comics Code. Check out the information below. Now, let's get into these three books. So, lots of good stuff this week. I really enjoyed my picks. Um, I really enjoyed that there's uh, some awesome DC books to talk about, too. And number three is Infinite Crisis. Number five, this is the first appearance of Jaime Reyes as the Blue Beetle. So, number three is the first appearance of Jaime Reyes. That one's been getting hot, too. But this is the one, you know, you see him right there on the cover. I've been talking about Jaime Reyes for a, at least a year saying this is going to happen. DC is going to have a project about Blue Beetle and it's going to be the Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle because that's the only way that I see it happening. It's now happening. We saw a 150% increase in sales with the high sale of a CGC 9.8 for $500. It's just blowing my mind, but what do you expect? So again, again, this is DC making announcements, making news. We just need to have them deliver because what I don't want happening with this book is that, and I've talked about this before, Marvel hasn't really had this because Marvel's had, you know, even the Marvel films that, you know, you may be in about, I mean, they're still successful films. Marvel has never had a flop 
or had a film that has really left people with a bad taste in their mouth. Therefore, you can't really correlate um, a, a book drop in the market because of a bad film. We've seen it with. So I don't want that to happen with this character. I want these books to continue to get hot. I want this film to come out and I want it to, I want to come out of that theater watching this film like ecstatic to where I want to go pick up everything Jaime Reyes in the comic book. So that is my number three pick. Exciting stuff. How, how do you feel about that, uh, Rob, considering that, you know, is in kind of uh, in your world that you, you're working for DC Comics. Have you ever written for uh, this, this Blue Beetle? I've never written Blue Beetle in any capacity, uh, any versions of the character. I know who they are, um, but I, yeah, not ever written them. Um, I didn't even know there was a Blue Beetle announcement, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> um, uh, of course, I know about the Snyder Cut stuff. I know about Hawkman. Uh, being in the Black Adam movie, which I'm super excited mm. to see. I love the actor they got to play Hawkman. Uh, I know him for Friday Night Lights, which is an awesome show if anybody's ever watched it. I know it didn't, wasn't super popular, but he was great on Friday Night Lights. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's interesting. You know, it's almost like, and this goes back maybe a little bit again to what Chris was saying earlier. So much of our entertainment right now is driven by superheroes. You know, mm -hmm. that it's almost like just buy everything, you know, like just buy it all because right. like they're just going to keep going. I mean, they have to keep minding yep. it. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're getting into some of these obs more obscure characters, I mean, they're just going to keep doing it. So, I mean, first appearance of anybody, I would buy it because it's going to come around eventually. Yep. You know what I mean? What is DC plus going to do? Stop making Marvel content? No. <laughs> You know, so just buy it up, you know? Well said. I love this. The only, time, For those... the only time that anything like that ever happened with me was uh, I love the New God stuff because I had to research a lot of that to the world when I was working on Green Lantern, and I just fell in love with it. I mean, I love Kirby in general, but I just fell mm -hmm. in love with it. And so I was in the shop, and I found, like, a New God's number one, I think 9.6 or something. It's the only slab book I ever bought in my life. I think I bought it for like one ninety nine or something like that. And I was like, it's a 9.6. Like, it's crazy, right? And like 48 hours later, they announced that New Gods film. And I was like, oh, shit, you know? And uh, I still have it, you know? But uh, that's the only time that anything like speculator-wise has happened with anything that I have, you know? Ava DuVernay, that, that, I, that's going to be an awesome, awesome film. That will, I'm excited for that one. Absolutely. And, and the thing yeah. with Jaime Ray is, you know, we say this every time, like every week, it, it, this is going to be the first Latino superhero as, as the main character, which is outstanding because we, Chris and I say this every week, representation matters, you know, um, you know, Chris, Chris's kids are, are mixed and he wants to have them have be represented. My, my daughter is Latino. She's half Latina or quarter Latina. And, you know, I want her to be able to look at these characters and think she could do whatever she wants. If she wants, you know, so again, representation matters, and that's another exciting aspect to this, how things are just getting diverse and being more like the real world. And that's very important. That's what we're always, so that's even more reason to be excited about this. But that is, uh, what is it, Infinite Crisis number five. We have another crisis on our hands though, Chris, don't we? We do. Well, actually, I just might just stop right here. And also while I'm at it, I'm gonna stop making top books to invest in on my channel. And from now on, I'm just going to post a video every day saying, welcome to Christmas Journal's Comics and Pop Culture. And today, just buy it all. That's going to be my new thing every day because it's the, the greatest truth that I've ever heard. It's a vendetti rule, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't go wrong. You'll go <laughs> broke. You can't go wrong. If you buy everything, then you'll have it when it hits. You know what I'm saying? No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Oh, right, Chris. Here we go. We got two make, more books left. Let's get yeah. through this. What do we got? I'm going to make that a t-shirt. All right. Number two. Number two. Final crisis number seven. Yeah. You know, DC loves its crisis. Crises, right? <laughs> Final crisis number seven. This is the first appearance of Calvin Ellis. All right. What's crazy about this is we get the announcement, J.J. Abrams. Um, 
new Superman project coming. There, it, 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 immediately since that hit, it was, oh, it's going to be uh, Calvin Ellis. It's going to be Michael B. Jordan playing a new Superman. Now, there was talks. Michael B. Jordan actually had like sat down with J.J. Abrams some, I, I think, years back now. I don't know when exactly talking about a Superman project. So when I was going through the, the sources and everything, I couldn't find any. It, it was it wasn't like rumor like we got this covered rumor, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. It was it was rumor that could have some legs to it. But there was no type of official announcement anywhere, but people ran with this and ran with it. And that's why you saw these books, the Calvin Ellis books, including the Superman book, um, on this list this week. This book right here, check this out. Cover A and cover A and B were on the list. Increased its sales 1,131%. Just crazy. And another CGC 9.85 hundred bucks wow i have that book in a 9.8 and i actually might think about sending that off to uh cgc now next week cover b cover b cgc 9.8 high sale six hundred dollars just just crazy it's just crazy i i look I, i'm all for this i hope that this is the route that they're going um but it's just it's crazy you know we don't even have anything uh concrete in terms of an announcement and people are going going all out for this so i just i hope that they're right <laughs> yeah that's the risk you take right like i read an article it was maybe a year or two ago but the article said basically if you had taken all the money that you put into the stock market and you bought legos with it you would have done better because legos was outperforming <laughs> the stock market you know because Legos have become so collectible, you know what I mean? Uh, but you do know that you never know what's gonna hit, you know? Like, I don't know if I'd be jumping in on something $500, like you missed the wave. That's why you buy everything now at a dollar. Yep, yep, right? buy everything. Like a week ago, you could go to the to the store and be like, infinite crisis number whatever, first Calvin Ellis, that's probably a buck, you know what I'm saying? So if you bought everything, You'd have made 500 times your money right now. That's <laughs> the vendetti not, rule, people. That's how I see it. You know what I mean? The vendetti rule. That's what we got. We got to do it. We got to do it. I'm going to go I'll buy my whole. I'll tell you that's something that'll drive you crazy. And I'll tell you something that'll drive you crazy. And probably a lot of your uh, watchers as well. Like being a, a writer at DC, like I know everything that's going to happen like months, if not a year before it happens. And I have never once gone and bought something up that I knew was going to happen because it just feels like cheating. You know what I'm saying? It's like insider trading. You know what I mean? Like, it's not fair. I don't go do it. I could have bought up Tim Fox comics or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do it. You know, that's interesting. Cause wow. That's, that's, a, that's, that's really good to hear that. Cause Chris and I talk about this, you know, you know, I guess from other angles in terms of insider trading, but like, because you have the studio sides of things and all that stuff, but that's good to hear. Honestly, that's uh, no no joke. That's that's really good to hear. That that and I'll also say, and I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I, I would have no way to know, mm. but I've never heard anybody say, "Oh yeah, man, I made a killing on such and such because I went to the writers retreat and I knew this was going to happen, and so I bought them all up." I've never mm. heard that conversation once. You know. So I don't know if it's an unwritten rule, if it's code of honor, or maybe wow. they just don't talk about it and they're all a lot richer than I am. I have no idea. But uh, I've never heard anybody say that they traded on that kind of stuff, you know? You just made me snort and laugh. Uh, that's, <laughs> no, that's seriously, that's amazing to hear because that's something we don't normally think about either. I guess we do to an extent, but hearing it from a writer, from somebody on your level, that that's not something you kind of even entertain. That's 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 solid work, and we appreciate that as collectors too. So, um, but here's another book though that you could have you know got in if you did the Venditti rule. Uh, yep. This is going to be our third book of the week. Here Works we go. every time, baby. Works every time. Here we go. So, this this is probably this is probably obvious, you know. When um, I I saw it 
Friday. So it wasn't on the list last Friday because, you know, data has to come in. But we already knew, you know, Jeff, you and I, we, we knew. I knew before I went to sleep Thursday night after I watched WandaVision that this book was going to be on this list. The new stand and the direct. The direct was number one on the list. And this is number one on my list. And that's West Coast Avengers number 45, the first appearance of the white vision. So uh, again, just to reiterate, I, I talked about this last week. I was, I'm in the, I'm on the West coast. I was watching this book. Jeff and I were talking about this a couple weeks prior, like, Oh, you know, we, we could see white vision show up and I'm on my phone, you know, and I'm on the Mercari app looking at watching books. I'm, I'm watching some on eBay and some people have them listed for, you know, 10, 20, uh, 30 bucks, but the only ones that have sold are like, you know, 10, $15 Thursday hits and it's nine, nine 45 my time. And I'm looking and I'm seeing these books sold for like 30, $40 by the time it aired on the West coast. And it was 1245 by the time that, uh, end credit scene hit, this book was pushing a hundred dollars. I'm in my live stream on Friday afternoon that Friday and I'm live and I'm looking at this book and a book sold for a hundred and what $67. There was a couple that, ba that, that hit right at about 200 madness right away. So let me put this in context before I actually go into the high sales. Think about this. Think about this. We've this, th this was a basically an announcement of a character that I don't think we've really seen before in the MCU outside of Thanos. And you can argue, you can argue uh, Adam Warlock, but I, I, I don't, I won't put that in this category because it's still a cocoon. Okay. Um, but outside of the first time we saw Thanos, when do we get such a teaser like this? And I think what made this even extra special for collectors to jump on this is because we haven't had any MCU for practically a year and a half since July of 2019, far from home. And then you get to where oh, that's more than a year and a half. It's, it's, it's March. Well, it was February when, last week. Right. And then this happens and it was that first real, I mean, we could speculate and then we get announcements. We could speculate on, on, uh, Moon Knight. And then we get an announcement. Oscar Isaac's playing Moon Knight. Oh, cool. We know that's coming. We don't get, this wasn't an announcement. This is boom. There it is. Oh, picking up my phone. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Right. And it, everybody just went wild and went crazy. So let's look at these numbers. 293% increase in sales. But get this. This is what is just mind blowing. High sale of a CGC 9.8. $1,500. And let me remind, remind you, I mean, this book was easily a five to $10 book a month ago. And you most likely could dig through some back issue bands and possibly even find it cheaper than that. This is absolute madness, but Hey, look, I love it. I love it. I'm not buying it. I don't own it. I'm not buying it right now, but I love it. I, that's all I got to say. It's not going <laughs> to stay at this level. Okay. $1,500 for 9.8 is outrageous. Robert, I, I don't know how much context you have with what's been going on here, but that is uh, that is insane. This is the 90s. This is mass produced. It's John Byrne goodness. My, you know, I love him, but like, I would not pay $1,500 for 9.8. Um, I don't know that I'd pay $1,500 for anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but... What I will say is, if that's your thing, man, cool. You know, like yeah. I, there's so much MCU content at this point that there are probably collectors who just collect their 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 run is all the MCU content books. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how much film and TV and more coming down the pike that they're like, this is my run of everything in chronological order. That Marvel's made movies out of, or something. You know what I mean? Like it's like a whole other level of speculation, probably. And that's cool. I think it's great, man. If that's what you like to do, and uh, that's your thing, I, I think part of the reason why I never got into it is where would I put it all? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> like, where can I store it all? Uh, in all honesty. And at some point, it's like playing the lottery, right? Like, I'll play the lottery once in a million, once in a while when it's over a billion dollars. But then he doesn't roll out of bed for less than a billion. You know what I'm saying? But once in a while when it's over a billion dollars, I'll go play. But I don't play like my kid's birthdays and my lucky number or whatever because God forbid those ever hit and I didn't play, I'm going to kill myself. So uh, I just go in and do a quick pick and just whatever they give me, they give me, I win, I lose whatever, right? So I never did the speculation thing because if I bought it and sold it at fifteen hundred and then it was ten grand, I'd be like, oh man, and I don't want to live with the stress. You know what I'm saying? I just totally. stay out of it. I stay out yeah. of it. Yeah. You, know? you but you buy low, you sell high, you win every time. But I mean, this is what Chris and I say. We're, we're like, it's like if you're looking for an investment. It's our advice not to pay fifteen hundred dollars for a nine point eight. But if you want that book and you think it's worth it for $1,500, go for it. Absolutely. You know, don't let us deter you from doing that. But if it was up to us, we wouldn't. That's how we frame it. Whatever makes you happy. And I always say you got to accept the risk. You don't make a decision without knowing the risk that you're taking. So that's what it boils down to. Yeah, I think that's good advice. It's a good way of looking at it. And, uh, I respect the people like, do you guys both have independent things where you run your own sales and that kind of stuff? Are you guys, those kind of guys you just collect or, uh, more, we're more collectors than anything. Yeah. Like we don't have like, I'll throw yeah, some stuff on eBay every Instagram once in a while. Live I'm, sales that you're doing and stuff like that. No, we but don't I do respect, that. I really respect the retailers and the, and the, the sellers that have no emotional attachment to this stuff whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, it's cool to see how good they are at their business and where they see opportunity and where they take it and when they capitalize it and they don't ever look back. You know what I mean? I just don't think that I could run it that way. I think I'd always be looking back and wishing I'd done better. So I just stay out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah I, I get emotionally attached to stuff. It's like, oh, I may flip this. And then it's in my hand. I'm like, I like this. I'm not going to get rid of it. I mean, and it goes to what you're saying too. I could use a lot more space where I am. I have, you know... I have 4,500 books. Chris has 17,000. Uh, pushing 18 right now. I, I don't have all of them in my app, so I might be at 18. Jeez. I have, so the only thing, this is going to sound like the most egotistical thing in the world. The only <laughs> full run of anything that I have is my own shit. Because, like, I bag, like, three copies of everything I've ever done. Cause I don't know if like my kids or my grandkids are going to want it one day. You know what I mean? So I hear even you. that though, even that just bagging and boarding three copies of my own stuff. <laughs> it's like so much stuff that I don't have room for it anymore. Yeah. Cause I've written 300 comics. So that's a thousand comics, you know, that I've got bagged and boarded in boxes and it's still growing. And I'm just like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? Is anybody ever going to want it really? You know? But yeah, I, the Vendetti I, I, rule. Yeah. The Vendetti rule. That's right. That's right. And with <laughs> that, that ends Fresh from the Comic Shop.